I only ever had one idea for the Adams family because there was only really one thing I ever thought I could add. I always thought the best way to do the Adams family was to just kind of do the Adams family. I feel like the two movies, the two good movies, do it really well and kind of reinvent it. And I thought the Wednesday series, it's not the sort of thing I would watch. I don't think it's aimed at my age demographic, but I thought it did it, you know, fairly well. It was fairly fairly loyal to the ideas and concepts of the Adams family. But I always had one idea that I thought would be really cool. And it was to do, I guess there was elements of it in Wednesday, but it was to do a, a little bit of a prequel series uh, that took place during the 50s. And it was uh, Uncle Fester and Cousin It. But Cousin It doesn't have the hair yet. So Cousin It just has extremely long hair, but actually can talk and often puts it into a giant ponytail. At the And, you know, the first time you'd see him, it would be a close and it would just be the hair. But then he pulls it all back and like that and puts it into like a giant man bun that sits on his head like that. It would take place during the 1950s. They're both very young men and they're trying to get investors for a resort in the middle of the desert. A beach resort. If you know anything about Bombay Beach, which is a real place, and the Salton Sea, you know one of the greatest, most bizarre stories in basically American history. A bunch of people tried to create a beach resort out in the middle of the desert east of Los Angeles, like the middle of nowhere. To do this, they diverted a river and flooded a valley. The problem is, if you flood a desert valley, the water becomes so salty that it is unlivable, unswimmable, and eventually poisonous to everything in it. If you Google Bombay Beach, you'll see that for a minute they had a booming beach resort with surfing and all this cool stuff out there, and it was like a cool tourist destination until the water turned toxic. Now it's a scary, wild ghost town that has been populated by artists who've turned the whole place into a kind of giant art installation. It's one of the coolest things that exists in California that people don't talk about. Bombay Beach, Google it. But they're trying to build that. So during the first season of the show, they would flood the desert and the water becomes poisonous and it's these two guys trying to start a business. Okay, so to do this, they travel all over the world to get investors and they end up meeting this guy, Buster Scott. Buster Scott is like a dandy. He's a very Adams family character. And even though he's from like an aristocratic family, he's this extremely like, you know, I'm a fop, you know, hi boys, but he's always down for anything and super laid back. So even though he seems like a character who'd be an asshole or a villain, he just goes with everything the weird characters do and thinks it's interesting and cool because he's really, he's kind of found his people. That makes sense because he is Gomez Adams, best friend since childhood. They've known each other forever. They went to school together, then they got separated. Now they've come back together in adulthood. Gomez is their connect to Buster. They eventually get an investment from him. However, someone's trying to kill people involved in the project. And of course it ultimately turns out it's people in the valley who don't want there to be an ecological disaster. So the villains of the movie or of the series are basically nice people <laughs> versus the Adams family cousins who are trying to cause a massive disaster in order to go surfing. Um, so Buster Scott gets more and more involved in this, but Buster Scott has taken all these, there used to be all these drinks, especially in the late 1800s, uh, up until like the 1920s that were, had radium in them that were literally radioactive poisonous drinks. And people, I'm not kidding. People would drink them and their jaws would rot off and they'd die. One guy died so radioactive that when they, it was like a five hour energy. People thought it was safe, but he died so radioactive that when they dug his body up 20 years later, he had become even more radioactive. Buster is one of these people. And it would be shown through when he's around flowers, they wilt and die. Animals are scared of him. Light bulbs or whatever, you know, like electrical stuff kind of turns on around him and breaks. Uh, paint. At one point he le leans on a wall that has wallpaper and the wallpaper starts to peel because he's having all these weird 1950s treatments and he says, I'm practically indestructible. And sure enough, as people start making attempts on his life, he does seem indestructible. First he loses a finger, then he loses a hand, then he loses his arm, then he loses his leg. By midway through the first season, this dude is completely transformed, but he doesn't care. I was never that attached to my body. It's also superficial. 
Okay, so near the end of the season, someone makes the... And he's fine every time. It's like he can't die. <laughs> it's everything that gets... that gets, The more and more that gets taken off him, the more comfortable he is. Because he's just like... You know, it's that thing of like, not supernatural, but very supernatural adjacent until it sort of edges into supernatural, the Adams family, even though it isn't quite supernatural, even though maybe some things are. Well, one thing is, at the end of the season, in order to save Gomez, who's visiting the place, and his young wife, Buster pushes them out of an area that is blown out with fire when the bombs go off to flood the... They do flood the valley. When the bombs go off to flood the valley, Buster is trapped with it. And Gomez and Fester try to save him. He reaches, reaches, reaches. Boom! He gets incinerated. All but his hand. Throughout the, the whole season, people have been saying... You know, calling him, dear boy, dear, lo dear lad, he's bringing the money, he's bringing the bag, he's bringing the thing. And eventually the nickname, the thing, stuck. And then it was just thing. Where else do you want to live, if not with your best friend?